Welcome to the Mortgage Rate Weekly Market Update for the week of May 12, 2019. Hello, I'm John Thomas with Prime Residential Mortgage. Here to give you your update. Well, last week, mortgage rates ended the week about right where they started. If you take a look at the bond chart on the screen, you can see uh, mortgage bonds started right above uh, Monday on the 25-day moving average. They tried to rally higher, but as since the candle's red, that means they sold off and ended right back uh, above the 25 day moving average. They gapped up on Tuesday trying to rally off support, uh, but then on Wednesday they opened up about where they were, but then sold off with that red candle back down to the floor of support. Thursday tried to rally higher again, then sold off again with that red candle, and then Friday um, opened up at support, rallied higher, but then sold off again to end the day just above support. So with mortgage bonds, um, holding firm at that level of support at the 25-day moving average and trying to rally higher, we're, they're looking for a breakout. So we're going to recommend to go ahead and float your mortgage interest rates to see if mortgage bonds can go ahead and rally higher and have a breakout and move mortgage interest rates lower. But again, be mindful. If that 25-day moving average does not hold and mortgage bonds break below that, that would be a bad sign and we'd quickly switch to a locking stance. Now, if we dig into the economic news for last week, we saw uh, two readings on inflation. We saw the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, for April 2019 come out. Uh, it showed an increase of 0.3% to 2% year over year. Um, if we dig into the core CPI, which strips out food and energy, it was at 2.1% year over year. Now, remember, the CPI is a measure of the average change over time in the prices paid by urban, cons urban consumers for a market basket of consumer goods and services. So it's a good measure of inflation at the consumer level. Now, if inflation increases, that's bad news for bonds, which would be bad news for mortgage rates. So we like to see inflation not running hot. If that continues, that's a good sign. Then we saw the producer price index, which is kind of the same thing, but it's measuring uh, inflation on the wholesale level. So that's for the producer side. That doesn't always translate directly to consumers. But it remains stable at 2.2% year over year. Um, so this is a good measure. It tells us if, if the producer price index wasn't stable, was increasing, was running hot, that means down the road we can see consumer inflation increase because those costs of increase of producing goods could be passed on to consumers. Not always, but it could be. Then we saw weak initial jobless claims come out on Thursday, and claims came in at 228,000 claims for the week. Uh, it was a drop of 2,000 claims, but th again, we are now at the 230 range, three weeks in a row. So in initial jobless claims have moved up from the 200,000 level to the 230,000 level. Still low jobless claims, but now we see them moving up. If that continues, that could be a bad sign for the labor market. We'll have to see if that continues, because that means it could translate into down the road seeing the unemployment rate go up, which would be a, a foretelling sign of a recession we've talked about before. So we got to keep an eye on weak initial jobless claims and see if this trend continues. Now, in the housing news, we saw CoreLogic uh, released their home price index from March 2019. It rose 1% from February, and year over year, home prices are up 3.7% um, from March of 2018. So we've seen the, the rate at which home prices are increasing start to decelerate, but home prices are still going up on average. And the good news is CoreLogic is predicting that home prices are going to increase 4.8% from March of this year to March of 2020. So they're looking at, for the housing market to start in, uh, get doing even better as mortgage rates have come down. Now the other big news is it looks like we've got a coming home buyer surge. Um, which means more people could be coming into the home buying years. The number of individuals uh, turning the median home buying age, which is 34, is increasing significantly over the next several years, which is termed the next wave of home buyers. That means there'll be a larger amount of individuals coming to the market to either purchase or rent a home. Now, Zillow ha did, does a lot of studies, and what they studied this home buyer surge. They estimate about 3.11 million people are projected to enter the market by 2028 which is an increase of 7.4% from the past 10 years. So that's going to put a bigger demand on housing, which means we are projecting home prices to keep going up because if we've got this surge of home buyers coming in, that's only going to move home prices up, which means it's a great time to invest in real estate, especially with this home buyer surge coming. Um, and if you're a real estate investor, more people are also going to be coming into the rental market. Um, so that means it's a good time to own a rental market. 
And now in the local news, we got the next free first time home buyer seminar on Wednesday, May 22nd in Wilmington, Delaware from 6 to 8 p.m. at the EXP Realty Office at Independence Mall on Concord Pike. And then we're back in Newark on Saturday, June 15th from 10 a.m. to noon at the Christiana Hilton Hotel. You can register either one of those events or give us a call in the office. 302-703-0727 or online, www.delawarehomebuyerseminars.com. And then we're back in Maryland on Saturday, June 22nd in Largo, Maryland from 10 a.m. to noon at the Public Library. You can register for that event by giving us a call at 410-412-3319 or online, www.marylandhomebuyerseminars.com. Look forward to seeing you guys next week.